Skating. It will be center stage for Japan's Midori Ito, an artist on skates. And there is another Midori who is a world-class artist on a different stage. Each is among the best at what she does, but the similarities don't end there, as Morley Safer discovered in this, the tale of two Midoris. A sweltering summer afternoon in Baltimore, Maryland. The latest stop on a road trip without end. Can you sign a couple of cars, please? Oh, you're waiting in this hot weather for me? Sure. Oh, how sweet of you. I came wear. yesterday, but uh, I miss you. For 20-year-old Midori Goto, who performs simply as Midori, it's time to think about how close to the edge she'll go tonight. That's why I love performances. Each performance is a great challenge, especially when, when I'm taking the risks. I'm letting myself take these risks. Then the audience can feel the thrill, and that's what makes a live performance. That's one of the reasons why it makes a live performance so exciting. 7,000 miles away in Nagoya, Japan, another Midori, the 1989 world figure skating champion Midori Ito, considers how close to the edge she must go to become champion again. In any sport, we can't attempt a new technique or a difficult skill without the risks of being hurt. But on the other hand, we can't continue to skate if we get hurt. So it's a very subtle decision to make. It's very ambivalent. The athlete Midori was born in Nagoya 22 years ago and began skating at the age of four. Six years later, when her parents separated, she moved in with her coach, Machiko Yamada. She's had little contact with her parents ever since. Mrs. Yamada is like a mother to me at home. And when I go to the skating rink, she's a coach to me. The artist Midori moved from Japan to New York 10 years ago when her parents divorced. She now lives with her mother, whom she calls her only family. In a way, being away from the family gave me more time to concentrate. I didn't have to worry about anything. I only had to worry about music. When violinist and conductor Pinka Zuckerman first heard Midori, he wept. An artist like this, he says, comes along only once every 50 years. Others say the four foot, 11 inch virtuoso plays like a man. Sometimes, by releasing the energy, we're not putting as much pressure as we think we should on the right hand, which is, uh, which is the hand that we hold our bow. Um, sometimes it creates a bigger sound. But w when you hear that kind of, uh, when people say things like that, are you offended by it? No. Just under five feet tall, Midori Ito is the Michael Jordan of figure skating. When she launches an explosive triple axle, her competitors say she skates like a man. I haven't even thought about how high I'm jumping. But later, I watch the videotape and I say, wow, I'm really jumping high. And I'm really surprised with myself. Surprised, perhaps, but rarely satisfied. They are soloists. They perform alone. And when things go wrong on their respective stages, they must deal with it alone as Midori Ito did when she jumped into the camera pit at last year's World Championships and continued to perform. To be honest, all I thought was, gosh, it hurts. When I jumped into the camera pit, I thought, why am I here? I must go and skate. Or when this Midori, at the age of 14, broke strings on two violins during Leonard Bernstein's serenade and never missed a beat. You just calmly reached over, took a violin, and then you calmly reached over yet again. I did not panic because, well, first of all, my feeling for the piece was so strong. I loved the piece so much that there was not even a moment when I had time or I had space in my brains to think that I was scared. The artist with the guts of an athlete the athlete with the soul of an artist. They've traveled separate roads, each aware of the other, but never coming face to face until last August, when Midori returned to Japan for a recital. In a hotel in Nagoya, these two tiny, towering figures met for the first time. 
They talked for hours about their work, their goals, their dreams, the points at which their lives touch. When I watched her on TV, I had the impression that she is a genius. I thought she was sort of above the crowd. But when I talked to her, I found that she is the same person as me, and I felt like I was talking to a friend of mine. I didn't expect her to be so, you know, petite. No, when I saw her today, I thought, oh my God, you know, she's even shorter than me. Figure skating is both art and sport, and the figure skater must be strong in sport as well as art. Today I met the artist Midori, and I felt we had something in common, such as the feelings and thoughts we have before a large competition. The most important similarity that we have is that we both love what we're doing. And she was telling me earlier that, you know, she sometimes thinks of quitting, but she can never actually quit it because she loves it so much and she has put so much energy and we both work very hard. Work is their past, their present, and their future. <laughs> of course I think I'll get married in the future and have a family, but for the time being I can't think of anything else but the Olympics. I really want to find someone that, um, that I really could love for the rest of my life and um, that's, that might not be easy, you know, with the kind of work that we do, it might not be easy. And then it is back to work. Midori with the Baltimore Symphony under the direction of David Zinman and Midori Ito at the Lalique Tournament in Albertville. These two Midoris, this athlete and this artist, on the road again, on stage again, making the crowds love them again.